Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to our Between Lands tutorial spotlight series. Um, so today what we're going to be talking about is one of my favorite aspects of Between Lands, that is infusions, which is basically Between Lands version of alchemy. It is by far, um, undeniable I think, the most powerful brewing system in modded Minecraft. Um, you can make extremely, extremely powerful potions with it and a good variety. And once you get the hang of it, once you're used to doing it, it's really not that hard, though it does take a bit more setup than just making a brewing stand and throwing some stuff inside. Now, before you get started with alchemy, there's a few things that you're going to need to get. Um, you do need to get a sickle, which with standard recipe, it is going to require that you have gotten valinite. Not a ton of it, but you are gonna need a little of it. You're also going to need to make yourself a net which we've talked a bit about before. Very, very cheap to make, very early game. You also need to get a gecko cage, and you need to go out and capture yourself some geckos, which we've talked about before. Uh, just finding a gecko and right-clicking it, you're going to get yourself a gecko. Um, so very easy to do. Um, they are fairly common. Just bear in mind that they will hide inside of bushes and things, and they will try to run from you. Um, and then you need to go ahead and get yourself an Herblore book, Go ahead and get one of these made up because you're definitely going to need it and get yourself a mortar and pestle which basically just requires that you've found crack rock um, now the pestle is going to have durability but it's got 100 durability and um, which is really it's good for 128 uses as you can see there so it's going to go a long ways um, and you can also automate it which we'll talk a little bit about uh, here in just a moment so once you've got that stuff, your mortar and pestle, you're just going to take your pestle and you're basically going to slot it in. Um, and you can see it right there um, and how many uses it has. And you can freely remove it and add pestles back in. Your mortar is not going to have durability, so it's going to last uh, forever. And then get yourself some gecko cages. I do suggest, personally, I would suggest that you get a few of them um, and you capture yourself a few geckos. Um, you're going to need a fair few geckos by the time it's all said and done. Usually, in my experience, around 14, 15 to mid-20s, maybe. Um, just depends um, on how many aspects you have on different things. Because when it comes to researching aspects within Between Lands, it is random. And it is random based on the player. So what I find today and what I find in my series are not going to necessarily be the same things that you get. Um, because everything that you research is going to be randomized. Now what we need to do is we need to take our sickle and we need to go out into the world and just gather a variety of plant matter. Um, and there are a few other things that can be used. Basically if you open up your herb lore book uh, you're going to see a couple different tabs here. Uh, this talks about the different infusions and what they all do. Um, and then you have a list of aspects, a list of ingredients, aspect info, and ingredient info. So clicking on any of these, excluding list of aspects, because it's literally right here. This is the page that list of aspects is on. But clicking on any of these will open up to the associated tab. Even though it's not, it doesn't actually link to the specific, the correct spot um, I've found. But like if I click list of ingredients, I'll need to kind of back tab a little bit um, to actually get to the list of ingredients. Um, it kind of puts you a few pages past it. Uh, so just a heads up. Um, I don't know if that's a bug or if it's intended. But um, anyways, list of ingredients, this is going to tell you everything that has aspects to it. Um, so you can see it's a variety of plant matter, but also middle gems will have it. Um, a bunch more plant matter here. Um, all three of your middle gems have different aspects, so just bear that in mind. Also, weedwood bark, um, sap spit do have aspects. And then right here you have your aspect info, which tells you about the aspect and what it's used in, what kind of brews that it's used in. And lastly, you're going to have ingredient info, which at the start, it's going to be blank. So we're gonna to have to find things to add to it. Um, and I don't believe, yeah, I'm gonna to have to go into survival mode real quick. But if you take your sickle and you just break down something like a volar pad, you're gonna get the I'm a Druid advancement, but you're also going to get these, volar pad leaves, and they're used in the mortar and the compost bin. Um, and you need to, I would suggest that you gather up a variety of plants. Most of them are going to be gathered via the sickle um, to get them. And go ahead, I would suggest, go ahead and gather up a fair few of them. And you may want to get some to farm as well. 
um, because bear in mind that you can uh, farm the majority of these to duplicate these plants. Nettle, um, we can go ahead and gather some of that. Also this moss here um, is going to be able to be used in the mortar and just get yourself a variety of plants before you get started. And chances are you're going to find yourself going out a lot to gather plants. And then once we have these things, what we can do is we can place them into the mortar. And by default, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to left click this mortar and it's going to turn and break an item down for you. And you can see it used one use and it's made us a ground volar pad. Now, another thing that you can do is you can automate it. Um, life crystals are what is used for automation. And we're going to be showing that off a little bit uh, within this episode because it's used for also the infuser. Um, but if you take the life crystal and you place it into here, and then we just put in, say, some nettle leaves, it's going to start running on its own. It's going to do its own thing, and it's going to break these down. And they will stack, of course, um, same type items. And if you want to get really, really spiffy, of course, you can take and put a hopper underneath this. You can do automation uh, through the mortar, and then we could put, say, a hopper um, up here, and it'll feed in. Uh, if we put a hopper on the side, it will also feed in. Um, so you can do a bit with automation, and you'll see that every um, automation run of this, it's going to take 1% uh, roughly. Um, it does, it, you'll see that it took, it actually did two crafts before it dropped to 94. It's not exactly 1% uh, per craft um, of the life crystal, but it is going to use a little bit of that life crystal up. But bear in mind that you can recharge those with white hearts. Um, and then what you're going to need to do is take and put your geckos into your cages and they're going to hang out there they make great pets of course but you can also take these ground um, items and you can feed them to your geckos so if we feed this to this gecko you're going to see he visually changes a little bit and it says the gecko is chewing furiously on its tail and looks around as if possessed um, and it says this item still seems to have some undiscovered aspects so now if we open up our book and we take a look at say ingredient info you can see ground volar pads and you can see that it contains Bayeris, which is corruption. Um, and the way the gecko reacts to the items that you feed it is going to correspond to a specific aspect. But you can check it in here um, if you want to, um, you know, just double check it or if you're not familiar with um, what all the different effects on the geckos are. And if you take a look at list of ingredients, you can see that ground volar pad is underlined and that's because that we've we've researched it but we, but right now we have not found everything that the ground volar pad contains so then what we're going to do let's feed this gecko another ground volar pad the gecko scales seem to be glowing slightly um, and it seems to be the last undiscovered aspect on this item so now if we open this up you can see ground volar pad also contains ordanus which is the enhancement um, aspect and if we take a look at our list of ingredients, you will see that ground volar pad is now underlined and it's green. That means that we have found everything that ground volar pads contain. And if we try to feed uh, ground volar pad to the gecko again, um, well, right now it says the gecko is still recovering from the last experiment, but now it says you've already discovered all aspects on this item. So we know everything. We don't need to research that one anymore. And it's not going to allow us to feed that to geckos anymore. So let's research ground nettle. We can feed it here, here. Um, you can see its scales seem to be glowing slightly and it's chewing furiously. Uh, and if we take a look here at our ingredient info, it's going to contain Ordanus and Biaris, just like this one is. Because as you can see, the gecko effects correspond to, um, you know, kind of what happens to the gecko. And there we go. This one contains three things. You've never seen a healthier gecko. It's bursting with energy. That's a good one to find because that means that it's going to contain Yawin, which is your healing. This is used for, um, you know, all of your healing and restorative based brews. Um, now, your geckos will have a short cooldown period, which you may have noticed because it said uh, they're still recovering. So if I feed this, um, we found all the, un the, the aspects, but you can see the gecko is still recovering from the last experiment. Um, it's going to be about, I don't know, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, something like that, uh, before the gecko recovers. It's not a long time, um, but it is going to um, have a little short recovery period. Now, in addition, after you feed your gecko so many times, basically the strain, it's around, I believe it's around 10 times or so, 
basically the strain of eating all these strange things and being subjected to experiments um, cause the yeah this one only had one aspect on it um, but will cause the gecko to die so occasionally you'll have to replace the geckos that are in your cages and it's also worth noting once you get into brewing if you want to see like let's say I need Aswin I can click here and I can see what all I have found that contains Aswin okay you can see right there I fed that one and he died um, that means that I've fed him you know the maximum number of times and I would have to replace a new gecko into that cage now one last thing to note is when it comes to your aspects um, let me actually go to aspect info you can see right here that different aspects are different tiers so Aswin is a tier 1 Armanus is a tier 2 BRS is a tier 1 Bergenaz is a tier 2 and so on and they go on up um, you can see that uh, Geolurgaz is a tier 3 um, aspect um, and that's as high as it goes as tier 3 but basically your tiers kind of represent how rare um, of an aspect they are to find so it's going to be very common for you to see a lot of Aswin and stuff you can see uh, a lot of the things that I've researched do contain Aswin uh, Byaris, once again, a tier 1 is so pretty common. Uh, Birgenaz, tier 2, it's a little bit more rare. I found it in ground aqua middle gems. Um, and Bayonis is ground mire coral. There, there's another tier 1. Um, and so, depending on the tier, that's kind of going to influence how many possible different items can contain that aspect within your save, in your world. Uh, so just bear that in mind. So once you get everything, and I do suggest that you do a lot of research before you get started. Um, I tend to try to pretty quickly shoot to have all the research done. It's just helpful. Um, and you get a nice, you know, achievement and everything uh, or advancement once you complete the entire Arblor book. But once you have all the different aspects, there's nothing that forces you to research everything. It just makes your life a little bit nicer. And it's also worth noting for quick referencing, and usually whenever I'm getting serious about Between Lands Alchemy, I'll set up a chest so that I can quickly just go through without necessarily having the Arblor book on me. But if you hit shift on any ground, you know, any item that you've researched, you can see what um, aspects are in that item and the values in that given item. So you can see that oh, a single piece of ground volar pad contains 0.88 Bayeris and 0.7 Ordanus. Now it's not on 100% like a one scale um, because of course I've got more than one aspect value. It's just a value of the aspect and we're going to talk a little bit more about the values and how that works and what that affects um, a little bit later on but just so you know you can see the values and what all um, is in a given item just by hitting shift on it. Now once you have enough, you know, you're at a point where you're like, okay, I've done enough research for now, let me make a brew. The first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to set up yourself an infuser. And what you need to do is you need to, I would dig down two blocks, and you're going to want to get some peat, um, which is fairly common in the between lands. Um, and you just place it down, and then put a piece of moss on top of it, and take an octane ingot, and light this on fire just like that and you're gonna need the block form of moss um, that you would get with like shears or something like that not the one harvested with the sickle uh, so just bear that in mind and this is going to create fire and any fire created on peat is going to burn indefinitely just like as if it was on netherrack or something like that um, but really any kind of fire source underneath is fine um, so you can use netherrack if you have that available um, but if you're just in the between lands peat is your go-to and then you're going to place an infuser on top of that. And this is kind of like your cauldron. Um, now, whenever you add water to this, you can add up to three buckets of water um, to an infuser at a given time. Uh, now, one thing I do want to mention right now, I've kind of been waiting to mention these until now, um, because this is a point where I would, I would use them. Um, now, bear in mind, you can make an infinite water source uh, for swamp water like that. But... You can also, uh, like for example, if you don't want an infinite water source inside of your, you know, alchemy area or something like that, you can use 
uh, these barrels and you can just place water into them. There's a Weedwood version and a Samurai version. Um, and you can right click and say there's eight buckets in there, there's eight buckets in here. There's no real difference um, in capacity or anything like that um, between the buckets. But whenever you break these um, with like a pick or an axe, you know, Samurai um, use a pick and Weedwood use an axe, they are going to retain their inventory. So you can move these around um, as you see fit. And they do work with, you know, any kind of automation if you have some kind of liquid pumping system um, available to you. Now, the infuser has run out of water. That's because it boiled for too long. Uh, if you leave this boiling for too long, the water will boil out of it. Uh, so just bear that in mind. Now, as far as the infuser goes, I do suggest that you go ahead and do three buckets of water because it's just going to give you three times the output, you know. Um, there's really no drawback in doing uh, three buckets of water, except I think it takes a little bit longer, but... Um, but I don't really see that as a drawback. So let's go ahead and grab some items that we've already researched. So let's grab some ground bladder wart, let's grab, grab some volar pad, and let's grab some thorns. Okay, let's say, you know, these are these are the things that we want to melt down for the aspect. So we want Aswin, we want Yelwin, Ordanus, uh, Byaris. We need these aspects. So what we can do is we can take and we can just right click these into our pot and we can add up to uh, six different items, as you can see. And once it starts boiling, what we need to do, empty hand, right clicking uh, this, and it'll cause it to um, turn. And what we need to do is make sure that we keep this from, uh, from burning. Um, and so we need to keep it kind of turning and rotating uh, and whatnot, so. You don't have to keep doing this. You just need to basically uh, stir it about once every uh, minute, I think it is, or 30 seconds. I tend to keep a close eye on it. Um, another thing that you can do is if you have a life crystal available, you can automate it. So take your life crystal, right click it, and what it's going to do is it's going to stir it for you automatically anytime that it would need to be stirred to avoid burning. Um, so then you don't even have to watch it. Um, at that point. Now whenever you're breaking down aspects from items you really don't have to worry too much about the stirring aspect um, but I do want to go over I wanted to mention that um, because it becomes more important once we start doing infusions because really when you're breaking down aspects it's almost instantaneous you saw after I added the items and it started boiling the color changed um, that means it's ready to go but when you're doing brews there is a specific amount of time that's going to take um, where it takes about a minute. I think it's a, I think it's 30 seconds to, it, that you need to stir before burning every 30 seconds and then it takes about a minute, minute 20 seconds, something like that um, to finish a brew. And we'll talk more about that but you're breaking down these items for the aspects it's almost instant so you don't have to worry too much about it yet. Just get the water boiling and it's good to go. But once you're ready make sure that you've got enough buckets equal to the number of buckets that you poured in right of your swamp water and then just go and shift right click to pull these out and what you're going to do or what you're going to get is these infusion buckets and you can see that there's a ground volar pad a ground thorns and four times ground bladderwort flowers in these buckets that's what um, these infusions made and then you need to get yourself uh, some Alembics. I do suggest that you have more than one. Uh, if you only have one, it's going to be a very slow process. So go ahead and try to make a few of these. I tend to like having a table uh, full of them personally, just because they take a while to run and you use them a lot um, with Between Lands Brewing. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your infusion buckets and you're just going to right click these onto the Alembics. And they're going to begin running and it does take them a little while and you're going to say that as this goes um, it's going to make particles whenever it's running and it's going to slowly fill up this little dendrothus vial uh, that it's attached to and you're going to say this liquid level slowly go down now you're going to know it's done because this is going to be empty this is going to be full and the particles are going to stop um, and that's when it's going to be finished um, and it does take a little while to run it's going to take a few minutes so you know, you may go off and do something else. You may uh, take this time to melt more things down in the infuser. Um, it's really just up to you. But I do suggest at this point that you have some dendrothus files because you're going to start using a lot of these. And what's really nice about 
Dentrothus files is you can, if you want to, you can shift right click and place these on the ground. Um, and this allows you to add aspects to them. I tend to like having a shelf for vials that are not filled and then having a storage area for filled vials. And we'll talk more about that once these are done uh, processing down these infusion buckets. Okay, so our Alembics are done. And so then what we can do is we can take our Dentrothus vials and we can just right click. And we can also use orange Dentrothus vials, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, and what we need to do is we need to just collect all the different aspect files from this. And then we can go over, and this is where setting them down becomes very, very handy. Because let me double check, I don't believe it was ever added to where you can do this, but I could be wrong. Yeah, um, you have to set these down um, in order to combine them. Um, so for example, we're going to set down Ordanus here. So Ordanus is sitting down right there, and then what we can do is we can take this and we can just right click and empty the Ordanus um, from the Dendrith's file into this file, causing them to be combined together. Um, because all of these contained 0.35 aspects of Ordanus. And you can see combined together now we have 1.37 Ordanus. And I can put up to five Ordanus into, into a single vial, and that is what makes a full vial of Ordanus. So there we go. Now if you look at the, uh, like for example the mummy bite and um, anything that requires uh, aspects, you can see that this says one Armanus. Um, that means you need at least a one value. Um, so for example, this is a five value. Anything over a one value um, of Armanus will allow you to craft this. It needs to be in a vial. Um, so I could craft this with the five vial and it would just take one, one aspect worth of um, our manis from that for the craft. Any kind of crafting that you have to do through the table, uh, that's how you do that. So, and what you would do is you would take your vials then and just combine them together. Um, and if you want to pull aspects out into an empty vial, just shift right click um, to pull them out, and it's going to pull out about 0.10. Um, your first one does 0.11, but uh, it's going to pull out about 0.10. Uh, usually, so you can fill a vial up to however much you want in there, roughly, um, like that. And so what you're going to do is you're going to get your pure aspects. You're going to break these down into um, pure aspects, and you're going to combine these together, and you can start storing up aspects. And it's, it's not really a bad idea to throw a bunch of stuff in infusers, pull it out, break it down with the Alembic, and get yourself a nice stockpile of of aspects you know in these vials because this is what you're actually going to use for brewing um, because you want to take these aspects and add them into the infuser for the specific brew that you want and if you open up the herb lore book you're going to be able to see um, a list of you know brews that you can make and there is um, or infusions um, there's going to be so many infusions listed here, and then you're going to see what's called anti-infusions. These are your bad infusions. Um, these are things like the Bosilisk Drought. Um, it causes you to be frozen in place if you drink it. Um, these are like negative effects. And what's, what causes that is, for example, if we go over to like Elixir of Healing, and we read the description here, the Elixir of Healing accelerates natural regeneration healing one's wounds over time. A combination of Yaowen and Ordanus aspects is required to make this elixir. So if you look here at what it takes, it takes Yaowen and Ordanus. That's the base um, aspects that are needed to actually just make the elixir of healing. Um, the more Yaowen that's used, the stronger are the elixir's effects. The more Ordanus that's used, the longer the elixir lasts. So basically Yaowen is going to affect your potency. Ordanus is going to affect your duration. Now of course this brew only has two different aspects, but if we take a look at say Elixir of Feasting which has Selowin, Yaowin, and Ordanus, um, the more Selowin that's used, the stronger are the Elixir's effects, the more Ordanus that's used, the longer the Elixir lasts. So for this one adding additional Yaowin doesn't do anything, right? Um, you want to add enhancement and stomach uh, to strengthen the potion. Um, 
But if you look down here, adding Byaris, and this is actually a common little note, Byaris is the aspect of corruption. That's what it represents is corruption. And it, this one, adding Byaris, will corrupt the nature of the elixir, turning it into the elixir of draining, which drains one, one's health over time. Usually your anti-elixirs are, are pretty much always are made with Byaris, and they do generally the opposite of the good elixir. So a good elixir heals, a bad elixir drains health. And also worth noting, I just want to mention really, really quick before we move on to the actual process of making a brew, um, the benefit to making the anti-brews, you're probably thinking like, well, I don't want to drink that, that's horrible. But any potion, you can just shift, like you can hold right click to drink it, or you can shift right click to throw it. Um, and this can affect allies and enemies. Um, so for example, Let's grab ourselves an elixir of draining with potency five on it. Um, and healing, if you throw this at an, at an enemy, it's going to heal the enemy. If you throw a draining potion at an ally, it's going to affect the, the um, you know, the ally. So just bear that in mind. But if I throw this at the snail, his health's going to drain down. Of course, the duration's only one, um, but it's gonna do a substantial amount of damage. Um, and drain and quickly drain his health down. Uh, so if you want to make thrown potions, you can um, with different effects and things. There's you know weakening and uh, and whatnot. Um, now as far as making your actual potion, um, let's find a potion here that we want to make. Um, now it's it's important to note that the more aspects that are in it, the less impact you're going to have to play around with potency and duration because these potions kind of work on sort of like a tier system is the way I think of it. If they only take two ingredients, they're a tier one, which means you can boost and play around with potency and duration a whole lot more than something like this that's a tier three. I'm sorry, a tier four. Um, because if it has five ingredients, that's a tier four potion, and it means that you really only have one extra slot to play with. Because just like whenever we were adding things to the infuser, we can only put six as or six items into the infuser to melt them down for aspects. The same is true when it comes to making a potion. Um, we can only add in six things. All right, so the way this works, let's find us a potion that we wanna make. And I tend to like showing off something around the three or four ingredient range, because it kind of gives you a good idea. Two is too simple, you know, five, you don't have as much room to play around with. So let's go with, say, the, um, Elixir of Ripening, right? This requires that we add in Yeowen, Ordanus, and Dayunus. And it's also important to look and say, um, what are your potency and what are your duration of uh, aspects for this? So Dayunus is uh, potency and Ordanus is uh, duration. And we're also gonna need a little bit of Yeowen, but not much. So what I suggest you do is this is Yeowen. We're going to go ahead and just shift right click and we're going to get 0.11 out. No more than that. There's no sense in, you're really just, if you get more than 0.11, you're just wasting aspect. Because when it says you need this, but it doesn't, you know, affect your duration or your potency, you can use the bare minimum. As long as that is present in your infusion, you're good. So go ahead and just get 0.11 Yeowen. And then let's say that we want to go for, um, we have five slots to play around with basically. And we have to have at least a little bit of Dayunus or at least a little bit of Ordanus. Um, but let's say that we want to go for a mixed potion. We want to go for, um, let's say, potency three, duration two um, on this. Okay, there we go, got some full vials. So let me go ahead and get a full vial of Dayunus and a full vial of Ordanus. Um, when it comes to the things that you're wanting to use to affect potency and duration, now if I wasn't wanting to increase duration, I could go with a 0.11 Ordanus. And by field, I mean you want five aspect in it. I have tested this a lot in the past, um, and it's and it you are going to want field vials. And go ahead now, we've got all the vials that we need. We got our Ordanus, we've got our Dayunus, we've got our Yeowen. That's what we need to make the Elixir of Ripening. And once we finish this, we should have a potency three, duration two, elixir of ripening.
So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add our three buckets of water. Once again, don't add less. This is going to give you three times the amount of brews. And then we're going to go ahead and dump in our Dayunus. And our two vials of Ordanus and our little bit of Yeowen. And we're going to wait for it to start bubbling. Now, of course, when we were melting down items for their um, for their aspects, it was, you know, it didn't matter when we pulled it out. Those couldn't really burn unless we just didn't stir it. And they were ready as soon as it started boiling. Now, when it comes to making your infusion, this takes time. This is when you actually need to be stirring it or have your life crystal stirring your infuser because it's going to have to cook for a while. So you can see right now it's just about to start boiling. And then what's going to happen is the color is going to start gradually changing in this. And here in a moment, the color is going to start changing. Now, if you let this burn, if you don't stir it and it burns, um, what's going to happen is it's going to waste your potion and it's going to spawn a shallow breath. Um, so if you want an easy way to spawn shallow breaths, you can do it with infusers. Just dump some stuff in there and let it burn. And it's going to spawn you a shallow breath, which in the past it wasn't really useful, but now with the Drayton, it's a little bit more useful to just be able to spawn shallow breaths because it's really not hard to do. Just let something burn and it's going to make you one. So you can use that to power your Draytons um, once you have a nice alchemy setup going. Um, but we are going to let this change colors and we're going to know that it's finished. Like stay close to it um, whenever it's doing this. It takes a little over a minute. It doesn't take a long time to finish. Um, but you're going to get a sound effect and um, kind of a particle effect that pops up and the potion color is going to be um, the correct color. Because if you look at the vial, you can see that the elixir of ripening is kind of a bluish, kind of purplish look to it. That's the color that it's slowly working its way towards to be a finished potion. Yep. Any second at this point, as you can see, it's really kind of taking on that dark color. There we go. And now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and just bucket that up. And you can see that we have an infusion bucket. You can see the infusion time was a minute and 32 seconds. Ingredients, we have three times Dayunus for a total value of 15. We have two times Ordanus with five in it for a total of 10 and Yeowen at 0.11. That's our six ingredients. And then we're going to take these three buckets and we're going to throw these into the Alembics. Just like whenever we were breaking down the ingredients. And then we have to wait for this to siphon down and go into there and that's when our brews will be finished. We'll be able to check the quality and see how they turned out. Now bear in mind that making this it's not going to make one potion it's going to make a lot of potions and it depends really kind of on um, the tier of the brew I mean if you're making like so for example if you're making draught of the unclouded you're not going to get as many of those as if you make elixir of healing okay it may seem like a lot of work to make these potions but the crazy thing is elixir of healing if I was to make elixir of healing this way I would get like I don't remember, it's like 20 something elixir of healing from three buckets of elixir of healing. You know, one, one craft of it. It makes multiple potions and it actually makes a ton of them. So with a little bit of work, you can be swimming in potions a whole lot easier, um, you know, once all the prerequisite work do is done as far as the researching goes and the general initial setup uh, work is done because this doesn't require anything like blaze powder or anything like that. You just get your aspects. And once we cover a spectra seeds, you're going to realize really how easy alchemy is once you put in the initial work to get started with it. So we're going to give these just a second and I will be right back once they're finished making our brew for us. Okay, so these are done. And get away from me, Lurker. Um, what we're going to do is just right click. And once again, if you use the orange dentrithist when you drink it, it's not going to make a dirty version, um, so you won't have to clean it, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use orange. And we can see how many we got from a single craft of this. So one bucket makes six elixirs of ripening. And you can see that all of these are potency three, duration two. Um, which basically elixir of ripening, of course, this gives you the ripening effect. So 
we can get rid of the decay um, by drinking this. So we don't have to worry about eating, you know, sap jello or something like that to deal with decay. We can just drink this potion that we've made um, 18 of with a single craft. So single craft, there we go. 18, elixir of ripenings, potency three, duration two. That easy. It's really not all that hard. Um, I know it's a little bit intimidating um, at first, but it's actually not a hard system to learn and to really master once you play around with it a little bit. There's a lot of really great brews for defense and offensive purposes and just utility in general. Um, you know, if you're a bad shot with a bow, there's a potion for that. If you need super crazy health regen, there's a potion for that. If you don't want to eat food anymore, there's a potion for that. And you're going to be able to make like 20 of these things per craft. Um, like I said, Elixir of Healing, it makes like 20 something with a single craft. Um, and I mean, that goes really, really far where you can just have regen effects. Um, so definitely worth the initial effort and the initial investment um, to get started with Between Lens Alchemy. Absolutely wonderful. And I know that some really exciting things are on the horizon for Between Lands Infusions. So, um, something to definitely learn and take advantage of. And it does make Between Lands bosses and bosses in general and just any kind of combat a whole lot easier. Especially when you're running like Regen 5. You know, that's just it's like game breaking the first time you run Regen 5 for a boss. And I got a couple things I want to add um, that I thought of adding while I was editing the uh, the prior footage. Uh, first up, don't don't let your infusions sit too long because what happens is they turn brown. You need to you need to keep an eye on these and harvest them as soon as possible after the the brewing is completed. Um, because what happens is if you don't, they'll overcook, they'll turn brown, and they're unusable. It's about the same as if you if you collect them too soon. And if you do gather up an infusion too early or too late, um, just go ahead, dump it into an Alembic, and cook it down to its core aspect types, and then you'll have to rinse and repeat the whole process of cooking down the brew. So just make sure, keep an eye on it. Don't run off and leave it, leave it brewing. It doesn't take that long, about a minute and a half um, on average, so it's not a big deal. Um, also, one thing I wanted to add, because in the past, whenever I released a video on Fusion, I had you know a couple of people say, no, no, it's ratio-based. Um, because I know on the wiki, it, it talks about it is ratio-based. And it is to a certain degree where, based on the amount of aspects and stuff that you put into it, it's going to change the, you know, the total amount of brews that you get and things. But it's not ratio-based as far as the potency and duration. Um, and that's what I want to stress. So I made a few different infusions. I've actually got five different ones here. Uh, if we take a look here, this brew is, um, I'm actually making, um, for the record, I'm making lightweight draught because it requires five ingredients. Um, Unigaz, it increases the effects. Uh, Yerin uh, increases the duration. Um, and I actually made these with duration focus just to kind of show you uh, the difference and with this brew you really only have that extra spot to play around with so it kind of limits what you can do but this this first one was made with 0.11 of all four except for uh, Yenrin which is two full vials of five and if we gather from this one you can see that we got three potency one duration two lightweight draughts Okay, with that, with that uh, makeup of it, and as an and that was that was made with three buckets of water in the infuser. Now over here, I did this same brew of 0.11 on everything except for the Yenrin, and this was made with a single bucket in the infuser. Um, so one bucket of water, and then those, and you can see that I still got the exact same thing: potency one, duration two, and three vials. Okay, now over here. This was made with um, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, and two full fives to show you the difference in the amount that you get. So if we gather that out, you can see that now I got four potency one, duration two, lightweight draughts. Um, then next to it over here, we have, this one was made with uh, Aswin, Unigaz, Gerolagrass, <laughs> Birganaz, and then the Yenren, all fives, right? And then two of the Yenrens. And 
This one, we're going to get a lot more output from this. So as you can see, I got seven from a single bucket. And that's because that's where ratios become important is the more total aspect that you put in the more of a potion you're going to get. So I got seven as opposed to three. Now to me personally, I don't think a full vial of all four of those is worth the extra four potions usually. Um, that's me personally, because I, you know, that's a lot more that I have to grind up instead of just 0.11 on those things. And then a lot of what's important. But if you want just more overall output, you can do that. If you have a lot of excess um, of a certain type, dump a bunch in there, you know, something like that. But for, I think for general brewing, I like going uh, with this method here, just the bare minimum and then just a lot of what I need to up the potency or duration. And then the last brew here, this is made with um, everything set to 0.11 and only 2.5 in the two vials of Yenrin. Okay, so it only comes out to a total of five. Um, and so if we vial this up, you can see I got two brews and they're potency one, duration one. So it needs a little bit more value to bump up. That's why with the max tier brews, you're only able, able to really, without creative mode, just cheating them in from the, um, you know, from the creative tab, you're really only able to get a potency or duration of two and the other one of a one. So that's like, for example, this one with all fives, I still only got a potency of one, even though my potency value was set to a five. So in some ways it is ratio based, but not in the sense where more or less water changes things, not in the sense where more or less total aspects really change anything. It's just set to a value. Um, so having, you know, getting a duration two would be, um, if, I have to, if I had to guess, it's maybe a 7.5 value or something like that, where that's what you have to, that's the threshold that you have to reach and ratio really changes things just as far as the total output not the potency duration stats on a potion as you can see from all of these a lot of different types of setups um, but still the same output pretty much except for this one's weaker because i only had a total value of five on the yinrin so i just wanted to point that out um, that that's how that works and just kind of give that a minute um, to discuss that so anyways i know it's a bit longer of an episode alchemy a lot to cover a whole lot to cover but i think we have pretty much covered everything um i will include a link down in the description for my old between lands alchemy tutorial if you guys want to check it out it was back on the SevTech series on the patron server and if you guys want to see the workshop that i kind of had set up so if you kind of want to see a practical setup uh, for survival mode for between lands brewing uh, you can check out that video if you haven't seen it before. Um, it's a little bit of an older tutorial, but most everything aside from the A Spectra stuff is still applicable um, and it's the same, you know, now. Um, the main differences with Alchemy is they added the sensor, which has some alchemical effects, which we're going to talk about. And then A Spectra's farming is a little bit different, which we're going to talk about. So, next two episodes are going to be covering A Spectra's and sensor and, and stuff. So, Anyways, if you guys enjoyed it, if you found it helpful, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.